I'm Cindy Guerrero. And I'm Tomas Guerrero. And together, we're bringing you voices from around the university. To talk about things that matter to you, our students. This This is RG Voices. For some more insight on today's topic, stay tuned after the first part of the podcast for a special interview with another voice from around the university. All right, so for today's episode, we're going to talk about um, what is 1301 and 1302, uh, because we feel it's important to kind of lay that out the very first time around, just so we can have a good understanding of what it is for our students. Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of students come in and they're like, well, what's the difference? Why are there two? What is this absolute drudgery? Why are we doing What but am anyway. I in for? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that question. Why, what are we in for? Yeah. So we wanted to kind of come in and, and clarify a couple of things for you guys and, and introduce some things that maybe you should be aware of that you should ask your professors what kind of things you're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to hopefully reassure you that, you know, you're going to do okay as long as you do everything we say. I'm kidding. Yes. As long as you, you kind of uh, make sure you, you keep your head in the game, so to say. Um, so um, I guess we should start with a couple of uh, introductory questions that maybe the students should ask their professors very first day. So what do you think one of those questions is? Like, you Can know, we eat in class? And, uh, that one is pretty high priority, I admit, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should start with something like, um, what would be a good introductory question? What is your name? No. <laughs> no, well, I, I say that, but for real, because our names are also our emails, so yeah, that's, that's true. pretty high priority. And I know sometimes when I start class, I forget it's... to do that, and it's like, oh, right. These are new people who don't know me. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I mean, we're still trying to get to know you, too. Um, maybe some important questions you could ask are, you know, like, let's say, uh, you could say, like, attendance. Like, are we going to need to come every day? Mm-hmm. I know, especially if you have a 1302 course that has an R in it, some people are like, well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. But that would probably be something you want to clarify. That that means it's a reduced seating course. Right. Um, you could ask about what kind of projects are we going to be doing? Mm-hmm. What kind of homework are we going to be doing? Mm-hmm. Do we need the book? Right. Uh, all those are pretty common questions. Sometimes they're found in the syllabus, but it might be worth clarifying Right. with your professor definitely and definitely how grades work i oh, yeah. feel like that's something that students are curious about but maybe they're a bit trepidatious about asking does right. that make sense yeah all oh, right yeah I, and some professors have different ways of dealing with grades i know for myself uh i i purely go on uh attendance participation and like your your work that you actually do. Mm-hmm. If I see that you're trying, you're, you're doing your best, you email me when you have questions, mm-hmm. you try to locate me during my office hour, mm-hmm. you show me your drafts. When you produce work, that shows me, like, you know, when it comes to grading, you're definitely doing well. Right. Um, okay, so... Those could be the things that you ask. Uh, we do also want to maybe cover some of the projects that you could expect to do, and they they vary between 1301 and 1302, and right. even the different 1301s with different professors right. and their different 1302s as well. Mm-hmm. So you could probably expect some multimodal projects, and we'll go over that in another episode in more detail, but just be aware that it's um, projects that look a little different than, I guess, the expected straight up essay right yeah and it would it really does depend on the subject and the goal of the project but multimodal just basically means two or more different kinds of modes of delivery right and and when we say modes we mean like visual we Mm -hmm. mean kinesthetic so Mm -hmm. something you can manipulate and touch Mm -hmm. we mean auditory uh even even hitting on emotional levels is is a mode that you mm-hmm. can you can hit on. When I say emotional, I don't necessarily mean something sad. You know, it could be something nostalgic. It could be something uh, funny. Uh, anything right. that really causes a separate reaction aside from just one one specific mode. Right. Uh, is multimodal. Right, but you can be you can expect to, I guess, use a bit of your creativity and imagination yes. for those kinds of projects. So you can expect that. You can also expect um, some essays, yes, and the format of that will depend on the professor. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually we try to move away from the traditional five-paragraph essay into something that 
creates more rhetorical choices, and we'll talk about rhetoric in another episode as well. Yeah. Uh, we can expect some essays. You can expect um, some reflective projects or reflective mm. essays right. and that's important as well again all these will be discussed in detail right. later but we just want to give you kind of an idea about um, what you can expect in right. these classes something you should keep in mind whenever you get assigned an assignment mm. is the idea that they're being done for a reason mm -hmm. these aren't just things that we you know cook up in our witch's lab and we're like what torture can we come up with it, these projects are all challenges for you mm -hmm. to kind of explore the types of choices you're going to make as somebody, you know, being challenged from a different standpoint. Right. If we ask you to create, um, a, one of the assignments is a literacy narrative. So we, in 1301, we ask you to elaborate on who you are right. and what kind of reader and writer you are. And then we tell you, make a map of it. And we don't give any other specific directions aside from make it multimodal. You know, a lot of students get hung up and it, they ask, well, what do you want? And we just say, just do whatever. We want you to essentially challenge yourself to create something mm -hmm. that is uniquely you. Something that, you know, if we were to tell everybody just do this, mm -hmm. uh, then it, would, it wouldn't really be anything new. Nothing valuable uh, gets created. Mm -hmm. But, you know by allowing yourself to kind of go, can I do this super cool thing? And our job is to basically say, yeah, go out and do it. Right, uh, That's right. exactly what we're looking for. Right, right. Uh, and we do want to kind of um, emphasize what it also means to be a responsible 1301 oh, and 1302 right. student, uh, because we we tend to run into to minor issues with um, some students maybe disappearing on us in the middle of the semester mm -hmm. or... Uh, not turning in some major projects, and it really affects their grade. And it's it's very rare, but it does happen, and right. for for understandable reasons often. Uh, but we do want to emphasize what it means to be a responsible student. So, from my perspective as a professor, um, I think a responsible student is someone who's who shows up every day, mm -hmm. and um, if they don't, they keep up with communication with me, so they can I can know that they're still committed to the class in a way. Right. Um, they do their makeup work. They try their very best to make their projects as uh, effective as possible, mm -hmm. and um, they they show me that they care about their work. Right, and um, they are also uh, strong at time management skills. And I know that tends to be a little difficult with this new environment that you might be in. You might be right. a very brand new college student and you're not used to the kind of schedule we have here and the kind of freedom that's totally understandable but we do also have to develop some new time management skills to get used to that freedom and not fall behind right i mean we a lot of your professors are going to treat you like adults mm -hmm. and that means you know the difference between saying well i don't want to go to class because i stayed up until 4 a.m playing the new latest call of duty that's that's not a good enough reason to start missing class, you know? And, and so when you when you present to us the type of person you are, we, we do notice. Mm -hmm. we, we notice when you're absent, we notice when you're late consistently. Uh, and that, that type of thing comes into play when we're kind of evaluating the amount of work you do because that's, that's what you should expect if you were, say, doing any other professional job. Uh, so that's the way you're going to be treated. Right. Um, that, of course, doesn't mean like we're going to be cold, vicious people also. Like we're not just going to be like, I don't care that you had to drop off your child at daycare this morning <laughs> or that you got a flat tire. You're you're late and you're failing. No. <laughs> Unless we it's a Monday and then we will be like that. Oh, yeah. Unless it's Monday. <laughs> no, we're course. kidding. We're totally kidding. Sorry. Or are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, you know, it really does make a difference between somebody who say, just stop showing up to class mm -hmm. versus somebody who stops showing up to class and emails us mm -hmm. uh, explaining, you know, what, what's going on. Right. And Medical issues, family issues, whatever right. it may be. And then also uh, still attempting to accomplish the work that we are asking from everybody else. Right. Uh, it will, of course, depend on your situation and all mm -hmm. that. But if we don't know your situation, then, you know, we can't really work. Work with you. Yeah, work. Right work with you. Right, right. 
Um, and on that note, we do want to uh, provide some assurance, assurances, reassurances, reassurances, one uh, of those words. One of those. <laughs> uh, we want to provide some reassurances for you because we know um, you might be, like we mentioned, a first-year college student. Oh, yeah. uh, it, might, it might be the very first college-level writing class you've had. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a first-time English class in a very long time. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that you aren't afraid or nervous right. or thinking that we are going to judge you harshly because um, I know first of all a lot of my students they tell me right off the bat I'm not a good reader I'm not a good writer right. yeah. um, I don't know how to do it well my English is not that good right. my grammar and spelling aren't that good and so they worry that I'm going to right off the bat tell them how they're wrong mm -hmm. and how they're deficient and then um, judge them harshly with their grades and make them write a thousand page paper mm -hmm. on why they're not good at spelling or right. something like that okay. um, that is not how it works no we understand that writing is a process, and that process takes time to develop effectively. And so we are going to treat it that way. We're going to give you many chances to make your work more effective. Right. Um, because that's really what we want to emphasize in this class. And so you don't have to be nervous about if you are deficient in any way, mm -hmm. because you're not. Right. You have great ideas, and you're very smart, and we just want to guide you along to get to a more developed place of writing, reading, rhetoric, and all that jazz. Right. And, and on top of that, you know, aside from us reaching out to you and trying to bring the best out of you, mm -hmm. the other thing that we do in class is try to create a space, an environment where those normal fears that we have, you know, sharing our writing with mm -hmm. each other, I know that that's like an immediate anxiety causer Hell yeah. uh, you're gonna be reading each other's drafts and we're gonna be giving feedback and immediately people start going uh oh i'm gonna be sick that day right there is an understandable fear and we get it but the other thing that we're trying to provide is this is the time this is the space where you should develop develop your ways of understanding mm -hmm. how feedback works how writing should work as a mm -hmm. collaborative effort versus a personal one right um if there's any other time to really explore those facets it would be within our class and mm -hmm. we try to make sure that that space is available for you. right so in other words you'll be okay yeah even if you don't <laughs> want to be here specifically like it's we know it's a required course so you kind of do have to be there but we hope we make it something for you that passes by quickly because of how fun and engaging it is right. and it tends to be mm -hmm. um so to sum everything up uh 1301 and 1302 courses uh serve as i guess introductory developmental um writing spaces yeah. and reading spaces and mm -hmm. rhetorical spaces um so you'll be doing a lot of writing a lot of reading a lot of reflecting and working with each other mm -hmm. um figuring out how to make effective choices for different audiences and uh it's very i don't know i would say very useful for now and for the future and another thing we'll talk about in another episode right. is how to use it for your future classes uh but just be aware that this is what you you can expect in 1301 and 1302 1301 yeah. very very much more introductory into the research process, to the writing process, to the reading process, and then 1302 is developing those skills even further. Um, and sometimes it's a themed course, so you might have emphasis on social media or gender studies or environmental studies, but we're still looking at all those subjects through the lenses of rhetoric and, and composition, composition, which is in the title, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. Uh, and again, we'll talk more about what rhetoric means in case you're unclear. But uh, that's basically what you can expect. At yeah. this point, I would ask if you had any questions, but it's kind of hard to right. figure that out if you're, you're raising your hand right I'm now. Just, I'm just kind of like still waiting, like, ask me something. <laughs> ask me something, recorder. But in that case, we'll be putting up our contact information. And if you do listen to this episode and you do have questions for us, or if you feel like, you know, could you talk about this subject, shoot us an email, shoot us a, a, a you know, whatever type of contact that you that you can and ask us questions because th the whole reason, our whole goal for creating this is for you guys. Right. It's yeah. not because we just decided one day, it's like, you know, it'd be fun. I love my voice. Yeah, <laughs> listening to our <laughs> voice is exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, ask us questions. And ask your professor questions. Yes, because uh, they, they obviously are in contact with mm -hmm. us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we're all just trying to work to create an environment where you guys can succeed right. um, in college.
So thanks cool. for listening, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Thomas. I'm here with Cindy, and we are here with a very special colleague of ours, Britt. Uh, whether that's her name or her nationality, we might never know. She'll never tell. She'll never tell. <laughs> she doesn't want to. Uh, and we're going to be talking about transitioning from high school to college writing. So, yeah. what what is what is that? What is it? What does it do? Well, I guess before we dive into the conversation, I can clarify that I, it's probably not the nationality, um, which is <laughs> evident by my accent or lack thereof um so in sort of conceptualizing what i wanted to talk about you know with students Mm -hmm. to students uh Mm -hmm. this idea of high school to college writing and that that weird transition between the two has always been a very i guess contentious issue Mm -hmm. um And so, you know, as a first year writing instructor, we primarily encounter students that are incoming freshmen. Mm -hmm. um, And so they're right smack dab in the middle of that transition. Mm -hmm. And so part of the course isn't just, you know, to study writing, but also figuring out how to navigate being a college student in general. Mm -hmm. Sort of one of those, like, uh, I guess, underlying uh, objectives or goals of the course. and so, I guess I just want to talk a little bit about my experience first, uh, which is not very special or anything. It's a typical <laughs> English nerd experience. So the As chances of this relating yeah. to any of you guys listening will probably be about maybe one to two percent of you. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's just it's another perspective uh, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. think about. And um, so, in high school, I was the traditional, you know good at English students, mm-hmm. you know, we're all good at that one subject, it's either math or English, and there's no in-between. Yeah. Wow, somebody <laughs> in the department, like, just went, who said that? <laughs> I, I could hear the lacus going, who said that? <laughs> so, I mean, I would always get A's in my English classes, mm-hmm. I would always do well in my essays, um, and I just, you know, sort of took it for granted that, hey, I guess mm-hmm. I'm good at this thing, mm-hmm. you know, I sucked at math. Yeah. So obviously, you know, if you're not one or the other, right? <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna excel at this one thing and, <laughs> and do good at it. Um, you can have something, right? Something to be proud of. Um, <laughs> just one thing, mom. Just be proud of one thing. I can write pretty well. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I mean, the writing focus in uh, in high school. Is sur- I'm sure everybody in this room can attest to, and mm-hmm. everybody listening out there is. It's all centered around testing. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So back in our day, well, my day, it was tax testing. I went through all the major ones. So it was mm-hmm. TOS, mm-hmm. TEKS, or... Te- I don't know. Yeah. And then tax, and I, I just missed STAR. Yeah, yeah. thank God. I think... Because yeah. that's... Think, I heard the worst. I think we all missed the STAR exam by, like, one or two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just missed one. It, but I didn't miss it. That's <laughs> 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 <was> fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Oh, perfect. <laughs> We're better off without it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, and so, I mean, all of those essays were all like, tell me about a time that you made a good decision mm-hmm. about things, or tell me about a time that you had a fight with your best friend. And I was like, well, what if I don't have friends? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I had friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like your name, we'll I, never know now. <laughs> from your thesis, I was, I was pretty invested so far, I don't know. It kind of. Not sure if I believe you or not, um, but they, they're they very sometimes annoying topics because it really varies on the location, the audience. And I know that there's a lot of people who, after they get out of the test, they go, but I, I didn't know what to write about, so I just made it up. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I would just make up stories about characters that were not me, <laughs> just <laughs> accomplishing the goal of yeah. the, the prom. You yeah. know? And she was beautiful, had curly brown hair. It <laughs> totally wasn't me. She wore brown glasses she instead had, of black. She had amazing style taste. <laughs> she excelled in English. <laughs> and math. <laughs> oh, so it's not Brit. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. <laughs> totally different person. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I would just make shit up. Yeah. And I would get, like, we were graded on, like, a one to four scale. Yep. Yeah. I would just get fours. And so I was like, all right, I guess this is working. I'm just going to keep doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Humble so, I mean, 
you know, if it's not broke, you don't fix it type right. of methodology. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that aside, because those weren't really challenging for me after a certain point, because mm -hmm. it's like once you realize, like, there's really no rules except mm -hmm. for make it look coherent mm -hmm. and answer the prompts, they don't care what it's about necessarily. Right. They always just make, you know, make shit up. Um, but outside of those sort of testing contexts, uh, other stuff, like I was involved in UI already writing in fourth grade. I was chosen. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I was chosen, chosen by um, my fourth grade teacher. That was pretty cool because, like, I don't know, as a fourth grader in UIL, yep. you know, that's when everyone's still, like, jazzed about school <laughs> and they're not jaded or cynical. Or use words like jazz. <laughs> Well that's, it, well, that's what happens when you marry somebody like right, yeah. older than you. Right. Greg. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Love. It's just different generational terminology. Oh, yeah. But anyways, um, so I guess because of those positive ex experiences, English was never really ruined for me. Right. Um, unlike many students who come into our classroom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, this teacher, you know, said I couldn't write, so mm -hmm. I just thought, well, I guess I'm not good at this. I'll be good at math or science or... <laughs> study something else. Or study yeah. something else. Or, you know, if I'm not good at this, then that must mean that I'm bad at it just all around. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, that sort of dichotomy. Mm -hmm. Either you're good at it or you're not. Mm -hmm. And so, um, coming into college, though, that was a challenge in and of itself because you're not writing for tests anymore. Mm -hmm. And... The prompts are not narrative based. Mm -hmm. Like they could give two shits about. Your best I don't. I don't care that you didn't have friends. I don't care that you had friends. Just I make it through the class. <laughs> right. Um, and so I mean, it was like it was like research based stuff, like mm -hmm. academic yeah. stuff. I'm having to come up with questions um, pertaining to like practical things. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be in the community or as a student and some of the issues that students grapple with mm -hmm. or, you know, I think I think in my 1301 class, because I went through this whole sequence, mm -hmm. I was actually a part of, like, the second pilot version of the class mm -hmm. and went through much of the same uh, projects that, you know, our students are going through right mm. so I did the literacy narrative I did the research writing about writing paper mm. um, I did the remix three ways public document thing and, and I did the reflection so I did all of it and mm. so I, I know exactly what <laughs> what you guys are going through and I'm sorry <laughs> right. it'll make but you it, better <laughs> it will it will hit you in about two three years yeah. you're like oh I get it now right mm -hmm. And you'll just feel that much better because you're like, oh, I guess I didn't waste my time yeah. at 1301. I shouldn't um, have given her a bad review. I shouldn't <laughs> have given her a bad review. Oh. <laughs> so I'm coming from that, that perspective as a right. student in a 1301 class uh, transitioning, you know, having transition. Right. And um, so I think actually the going back to the testing stuff in high school, the research question I actually asked had to deal with um, whether or not standardized tests Specifically, I think it was a tax test that I was right. looking at at the uh, time. Uh, like, accurately assess students' writing and reading abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I was a junior in high school at the time when I was taking 1301 because, once again, I was a nerd doing concurrent enrollment. With yeah. plenty of friends. With plenty of friends. <laughs> <laughs> so many friends. Social all life. All the math Just skills. Calendar. <laughs> <laughs> all the math skills. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, and that allowed me to look at things and think about things in a very different way. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually being challenged, not only intellectually, but mm -hmm. also, you know, as a writer. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, how do I switch gears from writing about, you know, stories, fake stories about fake characters to mm -hmm. actually talking about specific things mm -hmm. that exist in the world and their effects on people mm -hmm. or, you know, sort of cause, causation and yeah. uh, consequences, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at that, talking about that, seeing what other people had to say about that, and then the reading part of that project was pretty tough because you, I mean, you have to read through some pretty dense articles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely not fun, but why are we having, you know, our students do it? Well, because it's, necessary yes. right yes there's a method to all the madness oh yeah um, 
And so, anyways, sort of a side effect of doing that project, not only was I able to, you know, answer the question and come to my own conclusions about things, but I had the chance to practice writing mm -hmm. a research sort of project, um, even if it was like a small scale one, and right. practice reading examples of other written research out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really nice because going into my other courses, you know, when I did become a full-time college student, mm -hmm. having done some of that, you know, work as a junior in high school, um, <clears throat> once I graduated from my senior year of high school and transitioned into college, like, I kind of already knew what to expect. Right. I knew what was expected of me as right. a student and how I should be thinking about things, the way I should be writing about stuff the stuff that we were going to be reading and, and all of that also, you know, got me thinking about, well, why am I actually doing this right. stuff? Like, how did this apply? <laughs> and so it wasn't until I was, a, like, full-time thrown into the mix that I mm -hmm. started to make connections between the work that I did in my 1301 class mm -hmm. and the work that I was being asked to do outside of that class. Right. right. Which probably sounds like, oh, she's a teacher, of course she's going to say <laughs> that shit. Like, no, like, for real. That was my experience, right. Right. and it did take me a little while to to realize that because you know in high school you're just used to jump through these hoops, get yeah. this A Agreed. grade, right. and obviously that means something. <laughs> yeah, to someone somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and college is kind of the same. I'm not gonna lie that that's not. Totally There's the some same. courses designed that There's way. There's definitely right. some courses that are designed for students to jump through the hoops mm -hmm. and get the grade. For whatever for whatever reason, the subject, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but at least in my thirteen oh one, that was not the case. I actually walked out of that class being equipped with the beginning of certain skills that I would mm -hmm. eventually need to hone over time. You know, as a full time student, right? Right. right. So, uh, even at the end of thirteen oh one, we as instructors don't expect our students to leave knowing how to be expert writers, expert right. researchers. Like that's a process of continuation mm -hmm. over time. And so throughout my undergraduate career, like, I cannot, I mean, that 1301 class really helped me out. Right. Um, in the sense that, like, I just knew what I needed to do and how to do it. Right. And I paid more attention to um, my teachers mm -hmm. uh, and what they were asking me to do. Right. And so... Yeah, I mean, and I think that had a lot to do with why I'm sitting here today teaching other, you know, students. And uh, sometimes I get asked, like, well, you don't want to go get a PhD or whatever. You could teach graduate students. Like, well, yeah, I mean, teaching graduate students would be fun and mm -hmm. everything. But I actually prefer working with those freshmen, mm -hmm. you know, that freshman population because, I mean, having gone through it myself back in the day, like literally gone through the exact same thing that, our students are going through that you guys are going through. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm in a good place yep. uh, to help them navigate, you know. And plus, as a freshman, like it's fucking intimidating. Yeah, yeah like for sure. you have Very. no idea. Like you, that you spend your whole four years of high school being told like they're not going to care about you in they college. They're you not going to help you. You're on your own. You're on your own. You have to figure it out. And I mean. To some extent, yeah, that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> no lie. <laughs> there, there are some situations that do require our students uh, outside of our classes to kind of take the initiative and just go ask somebody a question. Personal responsibility. Uh, yeah, it's it's personal responsibility. Um, and, and you kind of nailed something that I, I, I really liked that you said, which was you didn't know fully why. Uh, something was happening at the time, but later on, like three years later, you were like, that's why it happened. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've actually told students before at the end of the semester, I go, the worst part about this is, like, all the things that I'm teaching you, they're not going to take full effect immediately. Mm -hmm. And I don't get to see you in two years where your brain suddenly goes, oh my God, that's why we did that thing in class. Yeah. Uh, even though I tell my students, ask me why we're doing this and find a reason why we're doing right. this. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's still a hard struggle of pulling away from like, do you mean what hoops do I jump through? No, no, no. Right. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we're doing this? Because <laughs> you told me to? I like, All right. <laughs> we're close. But that's <laughs> even, I think that's definitely part of the process too, mm -hmm. is understanding that in some situations, it's going to require that you are aware that you have to jump through hoops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's that awareness, I think, that we try to instill mm -hmm. 
in our students is that contextually who is your audience what yep. are you writing for and about and to whom right and how's that going to influence you know that process yeah. and i can definitely think of one specific experience um where you know if this had happened earlier on in my like i guess educational career this would have been one of those like oh i must suck at writing type mm. of moments right. right but this was like when i was like a sophomore or junior um in college and I was pursuing a, I was getting a degree in English but mm. I was pursuing the certificate oh, yeah. uh, for mm. teaching because I thought oh I'm gonna go teach high school after this mm -hmm. you know um, and so I was taking a, the first course you have to take through the education route right. um, or the College of Ed and in that class a lot of it dealt with you know sort of I don't even know what it remember what it dealt with. It was just honestly, it felt like most of the time the instructor was talking about themselves and their children and their experience <laughs> oh, no. as as teachers and and their experience with students and I don't know. Just from day one, this person really rubbed me the wrong way, mm, um, and that definitely you know <laughs> colors a student's experience. Absolutely. Right? It's just the instructor and the personality. But anyways, whatever you know, they're not there to be my friend or whatever. They're yeah. there to to teach me something mm -hmm. and so going through the course we had you know components written components you know stuff that we had to do uh, write about and there was this one essay uh, that we were assigned it was like it was an easy essay like not easy in the sense that oh it's easy for an English nerd like mm -hmm. right just genuinely not like, challenging it didn't really ask much of you right. right it's just talk about these things and then connect it to experiences that you have like okay done right yeah. and write that you know, in a night or whatever. Yeah. And so I did. I mean, I, I put it off until the last minute because <laughs> it just wasn't a priority. priority. Yeah. And I did it, and it wasn't bad. At least I didn't think so, right, coming from this background that I was coming from mm -hmm. um, and this new way of thinking and, and understanding writing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I get the paper back, and I got, like, a B on it <clears throat> or something, dun, dun, dun. which was kind of like, okay, why? What did I do wrong? Right. This wasn't like... There wasn't any like, like traps or like you know pitfalls or pitfalls. did I did I misread something? Yeah, or? like there wasn't any like sneaky things mm. to be misconstrued or misunderstood. And so, I actually started looking at the paper, and all I saw were the traditional red marks mm. of oh you <sighs> missed a comma here, oh this yeah. word was misspelled, oh this this this, and I was just the whole time I was just like, did this person even read mm. what I had to say, or did they just grade me on my grammar and I even approached the instructor after <laughs> class I was like what was what was wrong with this mm -hmm. you know other than the grammar and I can't remember the exact answer they gave me but I it wasn't good enough it really wasn't good enough mm -hmm. to justify the grade that I got right, right. like okay right. if you're going to grade me on this that should have been part of the criteria you should have told us I'm going to be looking exclusively at your grammar, at your grammar yeah. and all this stuff I you know, and I want to say that we did get some sort of criteria for, like, talk about these things, but mm -hmm. that at the end of all of it, you know, it's just really the grammar and punctuation stuff sort of outweighed all that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was in that moment, like, after that one assignment that I realized that, one, I didn't want to teach high school. Yeah. Two, I didn't want to go through this particular program because mm -hmm. if this instructor was a reflection of what was to come right it just didn't align with my what my un theoretical understanding of writing and how it works was mm -hmm. which is really unfortunate right because these are the people that do turn out those high school teachers yep. that yes. some of which are really amazing right. others of which are probably the reason why some of the students in our class have hate, such bad experiences hate writing yeah. right mm -hmm. it's not to say that's their fault right it's just unfortunate it's a system that perpetuates itself yeah yeah um, but you know, in that moment, that's when I was just like, "Yeah, no, this is yeah, this is bullshit. Yeah. Like, you aren't teaching me to be a good teacher. You're just teaching me to, I don't know, be efficient at grading stuff, right? And not really cultivate ideas, yeah. right? Um, and so after that, I I stopped doing pursuing the op, uh, the certification for teaching, and I just did English exclusively and. Maybe for a semester or so, I kind of like floated, <laughs> and I was like, "What, what am do I, I gonna, do? What am I gonna do?" <laughs> and so at that point, I was like, 
guess I'll go to graduate school. That's what everyone else does. We <laughs> don't know. We don't know what the economy is in the toilet. Yeah, so. yeah. At the time, it was not. Yeah, great. at the yeah. time, I mean, the job prospects weren't really great. No. So. I was just like, well, I guess I'll hang out in school for a little while. No. And I'm still here. <laughs> Yay. Six years later. Yeah. Uh, I guess it has been six years. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's six, seven, eight. Excuse us while we cry. Years? <laughs> it's six Let's years. take a moment to cry. I know, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's really unfortunate because you do want, I, I know uniformity is not always the best, but if there's uniformity in good experiences, that would be awesome. Like if everybody had really cool, positive experiences of writing throughout their school years and then mm-hmm. have that sort of buffer challenge because I know that's what happened with me like I did I had a really great time with writing Same all here. my life and then I got into my government class in senior year and she was tough like she had a tough reputation did you have Mrs. So, Rowland? yes and so no I love her she was awesome I loved her but oh, we, ha- we read uh, The Prince by Machiavelli oh, and yeah. it's tough and oh, then yeah. we had wrote a paper and do, I got a 10 I got a 10 out of 100 oh, on that I was paper. like, out of 10? And, uh, no. And it was the first time I ever got any sort of low grade in writing. But it was never, like, it was never discouraging. It was like, you Soul can crushing. do better. You can try again. And right. you're not used to this. So let's redo, like, theoretical approaches and everything. And she really helped. Right. And I had tested out the 1301 and 1302, so I didn't take it when I got here. I know I'm the worst. Um, <laughs> so I jumped right into my very first class being a upper level humanities class because oh. I was in the honors program. What a nerd. I know. I have a worst you nerd. She's a way worst less nerd. friends. <laughs> way less friends, I promise you. Uh, and uh, so the first essay he had us write was a very theoretical essay, but I was prepared because of Miss Rowland. And okay. like that's I feel like that's how it should be. Like, right. Being challenged but in an encouraging way, not a right. die way. You know? In a die. <laughs> you just die. You just <laughs> forget it. Forget it. Uh, I do know that a lot of students come in to our classes and they already expect a challenge, but they expect a different kind of challenge. Mm-hmm. So when we approach them with, what do you think about this? They freeze up and they huh? go, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? What do you think I should think? Mm-hmm. And it's very hard to break them out of this like uh, mode of somebody else is going to tell me what I think. Yeah. Because... Uh, this is the time where you're starting to develop all that. Mm. And we do it in such a way that we are encouraging. We don't mm. focus on just grammar. We we focus in on your ideas, your mm. voices, mm. your thoughts. Um, and we try to put you in these challenging spaces where you are thinking about, like what your topic was about, which things that have impact. Mm-hmm. Things that, that matter, not just... Tell me about the friends you didn't have. Right. It, it actually means something. <laughs> it's a it's a podcast for a reason. Yeah. We don't need that. <laughs> and of course, it's not your fault, dear listeners, about oh, no. like saying those things. Like I don't know what to do, or right. I don't know no, how, no, no, no. Of course, it might not have been something that was presented to you right. early enough or and, often enough. Right, and we do we do having our experiences. We have seen pretty much every type of example we've had students like ourselves who are in there going like this is what you're teaching me i already know this and we're like mm-hmm. okay good for you yeah. and, and it really is good for you be in addition to the class i know right like be my ta do <laughs> give feedback with me uh and, but we've also had those students who are just utterly terrified mm-hmm. like they come in first day of class expecting the worst scenario and then and they expect it so much that even by the end of 1301, some of them still don't believe me. Like, they think that they're going to turn in their final project, and I'm going to go, ha I'm kidding, I'm going to grade you all on your grammar, or you've all failed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, despite how, how much we try to encourage you in your ideas and your voice, and it, it is kind of sad. I have noticed one thing, though, that like y'all's example, y'all were good in English, but when it comes to students who, even students who go, oh, I hate writing, but they'll always talk about that one really great teacher mm. in their literacy narrative. And I do notice that those students who have had at least one positive experience tend to be more willing to open up to our classes and the type of skills we're trying to get them to be aware of. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of... Why don't you talk about Ms. Yeah, I know, right? um, So basically transitioning means, <laughs> in this case... Um, probably getting used to that challenge of critical thinking. Right. The challenge of critical thinking, the expectations of what we have for you as students, and being able to 
be confident in reaching out to us because that's what we're here for. We literally get paid mm -hmm. to sit here and record podcast. No, we get, <laughs> we get we get paid to talk to you guys that's about your right. ideals. <laughs> I mean, that's part of it. But uh, <laughs> but even even this podcast is an example of how we expect you to behave in an academic setting. I mean, not necessarily cursing as much as Brit. That again, it depends on your audience. You guys curse all the time, so that's why it's it, it's Some. age appropriate. Some, Some of you guys. Some of you guys. <laughs> but not all guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Uh, but <laughs> but we we encourage you to do projects like this because we hope that they have impact and we know that they will, especially if you have a target audience, which in our case is you guys. Mm -hmm. And we we do talk about you guys a lot, and not even just bad stuff. We talk about good it's, stuff to help you. It's not bad stuff. I'm kidding. I know. I I always tell my students. I'm always I always just go home bragging about all the stuff stuff that they did mm -hmm. um not a liar <laughs> <laughs> it's true i'm not I, kidding i believe you <laughs> sorry cindy <laughs> it's a dog we're at home stop talking about work <laughs> nerd <laughs> <laughs> she says anyway can you help me plan my next class I know. <laughs> but <Nerd. yeah. laughs> you and your ideas and your thoughtful insight nerd uh, all right. Well, that's enough of calling each other nerd yeah, know, right? and talking about how Britt yeah. doesn't have any friends. No. So, so Britt, we like to end uh, the podcast with a message from our guest. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of final thought that you want to leave our students with, either a personal message to them or something to kind of just anything that you want to tell them? Yeah. So, I mean, like you were saying earlier, some of the objectives of the of the course and um, what we hope as instructors that they get out of it and what we expect them to start doing, you know, like in terms of approaching us and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I would add to that, I guess, by saying that, you know, part of that transition isn't just the work that you do and who you're doing it for, but also you as a person transitioning from, you know, this individual who was at one point sort of a receptacle for knowledge where the teacher is like, here, here's all the knowledge I have to give you, take it. Right. Right. And, and sort of taking ownership over your own sort of, I guess, education mm -hmm. um, and being open-minded about it. Yeah. I think high school had a lot of limitations and constraints uh, around the stuff that we learned and the stuff that we talked about because it's high school right. and because the amount of time we have to learn it in and right. because of you know, the tests, the testing yeah. um, that we need to pass to demonstrate that we mastered those skills. Mm -hmm. But in college, you know, there's there's more room. There's more room to think about things, to explore things. And so I encourage my students to come in with an open mind, which mm -hmm. sounds really hippie-ish, um, but it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. if you are open to new ways of thinking and, and doing things, you know, not just in the classroom, but just, you know, as a person, mm -hmm. then that's how growth and development happens. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's how we transition from who we are as the high school student in the English 1301 class from the now college student in the 1301 class to the next version of ourselves mm -hmm. that we're going to be um, from there on out. So, yeah, just being open to that, which is weird, and it's like, you know, let embrace change. Yeah. Change is scary, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Well, Thanks, thank Brit. you, Britt. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've given that in.